Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. You should probably hit subscribe before it's too late. If this is not your first time on the channel, you probably have a screw loose and you should maybe seek some help. We produce some absolutely trash tier content for you here. And in today's how to play video, we will continue that escapade that we are on. We are looking at one of the anime classics, one of those fan favorites. You're probably a bit of a casual fan, or maybe you're just one of them weirdos who likes to just smash the fuck out of stuff instead of really playing any proper Yu-Gi-Oh! But it's absolutely fine, valid position. I won't judge you. I'm here just to give you the good content you deserve. So we are taking a look today at the Fossil Deck, one of those archetypes that's recently been released. No, it doesn't include all those old Fossil Dards like Fossil Dino, Pachycephalo, or however the hell it's pronounced that, again, hasn't seen play in about a million years, but there you go. But I digress. The intent of today's video is to give you a solid idea of how to play the deck and what it is that this engine in particular does really well and how you could potentially incorporate it into a variety of decks of your choosing. I will stop waffling though, let's get stuck right in to the video. The Fossil Archetype debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG as a part of Battles of Legend Armageddon in July 2020, a set which also includes the insane Numeron engine as well as plenty of excellent reprints including Invoked, the Chaos Emperor Dragon Prize card and more. The archetype is made up of Earth Attribute Rock Fusion Monsters, which were used by Jim Crocodile Cook in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. Technically, there are a handful of fossil cards that were already printed into the TCG and the OCG, but these are not part of the same archetype. To really understand this, you kind of have to look at the kanji, so although it translates roughly as the same, they're not the same thing. Bit weird. And although they do share the same name, the older cards printed do not allow any of these specific cards that have newly been printed to interact with them in any meaningful way. As the Fossil Archetype has just debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, we don't know yet if it's going to have any success, although largely it is accepted that the deck won't see much play at a higher end of competitive competition, although it's likely to see a good amount of play on a more casual level given it is based from the anime. So how exactly is the Fossil Archetype played? The Fossil Archetype is, as mentioned previously, based around Earth, Rock, Fusion Monsters. Despite people likely expecting these to be dinosaur related, they unfortunately do not fall into this category, something that might have otherwise made them much more competitively viable. The deck's lines of play are usually very aggressive, dealing plenty of piercing damage with the big monsters, destroying cards and pushing for huge damage as quickly as possible. Basically launching themselves at the opposition like the opponent is a proverbial Mia Khalifa. The fusion monsters in the archetype all can only be summoned using fossil fusion, which banishes monsters from both graveyards as fusion material, requiring rock monsters and a monster of any particular level to be played to be used as their material. With this in mind, the engine is clearly geared towards going second place. There are some slightly more obvious issues with this style of play. Relying on the opponent to have used resources in order to make the most of your own can leave the potential for a bit of a bottleneck, although this is arguably offset somewhat by the fact that these are all based out of the extra deck. And given that they are based out of the extra deck, there is a fairly limited number of cards in the main deck that could potentially become bricky if the opponent uses this as a choking point. The deck can also try to force the opponent into this position by using cards such as Specimen Inspection, but there could be a number of arguments against using this kind of card. We will, however, look at this card in a little more detail later on. So for the next part of the video, we are doing a rundown of the Fossil Archetype cards, what they do, and then afterwards we'll take a look at some of the spell support released for this. As always, we're going to cover these effects in a shortened manner. They will, however, be shown on screen for your perusal, but given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! player, we know that you likely won't be reading a single fucking thing. We start off with Weathering Soldier. If it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add a Fossil Fusion or a card that specifically lists Fossil Fusion in its text, except Weathering Soldier from your deck to your hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. 
And once per turn during the end phase, this card loses 600 attack. Next we have Fossil Dragon Skullgar. It requires a rock monster and a level 4 or lower monster in the opponent's graveyard. It must first be special summoned by Fossil Fusion. It inflicts piercing battle damage, and you can banish this card from the graveyard to add a copy of Fossil Fusion from the deck to the hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that we have Fossil Warrior Skullbone. It requires a rock monster and a level 4 or lower monster. It must first be special summoned by Fossil Fusion. It can make up to 2 attacks on monsters per battle phase. You can banish this card from the graveyard to add time stream from the deck to the hand. This effect is also a hard once per turn. We have Fossil Warrior Skull Knight. It must first be summoned by Fossil Fusion. It inflicts piercing battle damage. When it destroys a monster by battle you can activate this effect. It can make a second attack in a row. Think of it a little bit like Black Luster Soldier but not quite as cool. You can banish this card from the graveyard to pop a monster on the field. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next up we have Fossil Warrior Skull King. Which requires a rock monster and a level 7 or higher monster. It must first be summoned using Fossil Fusion. It can also make a second attack during each battle phase. It also inflicts piercing battle damage. During the opponent's turn, quick effect, you can discard a card and special summon an opponent's monster from their graveyard to your side of the field. This effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly for our monster lineup we have Fossil Dragon Skull Gaios. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly. It requires a rock monster and a level 7 or higher monster from the opponent's graveyard. It must first be summoned by using Fossil Fusion. Before damage calculation, if it battled an opponent's monster, you can switch the attack and defense of that monster until the end of the damage step. It also inflicts piercing battle damage. If this fusion summon monster battles an opponent's monster, it inflicts double damage. This is a bit of an OTK machine. For the next section, we're going to be doing a rundown of the spell and trap support available to the deck that's at least in archetype. Firstly, we start off with Time Stream. Timestream lets you tribute a fossil fusion monster you control and switch summon a fossil fusion monster from your extra deck that is exactly two levels higher. This is treated as being fusion summoned by fossil fusion. During your main phase, except the turn that this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard and a fossil fusion monster from your graveyard to special summon a fossil fusion monster in your graveyard. Following on from that, we have Specimen Inspection. You can reveal a copy of Fossil Fusion in your hand, send a monster from your hand to the graveyard, then declare a type and level. Your opponent then looks at their hand and deck and must send a monster matching those to the graveyard if possible. You can only activate one specimen inspection per turn. Following on from that we have one of the most important components in the archetype, Fossil Fusion. You can fusion summon a fossil fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials from either graveyard, unless the location is specified. To clarify with that point, if there are ones that say it must be from the opponent's graveyard, it must be from the opponent's graveyard and not your own. If monsters are banished from both players' graveyards, in order to activate this, neither player can target the fusion summon monster with monster effects. If a face-up fossil fusion monster you control is destroyed while this is in the graveyard, you can add this from the graveyard to your hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. And our last card for this section is Miracle Rupture. You can send a level 4 or lower rock monster from your deck to the graveyard, then if fossil fusion is in the graveyard you draw a card. You can only activate one rupture per turn. This concludes a list of the direct support for the fossil archetype, for obvious reasons you can't make an entire deck out of this alone. For this next part we will be briefly discussing cards that could be paired with the deck that intend to make use of the fossil archetype. This list is not exhaustive of course, but just some food for thought. We'll be following this section up with some deck lists. So you could start off by talking about the Adamantipator cards. We'll just make this part short and sweet. The best existing rock deck in the game and no surprises it makes arguably the best option for a line of support for this deck which is also rock based. You can also consider other generic rocky boys. And I suppose we could have lumped this in with Adamantipator but I wanted to distinguish between the two since theoretically speaking this is indeed a separate thing that just so happens to support Adamantipator too. 
You could try cards like Block Dragon, Gigantes, Doki Doki, although not that game about the literature clubs, trust me, and so on. You could also consider trying out Invoked. Invoked is another one of these crazy engines that can be splashed in, well, just about anywhere, and the strengths that this can offer are glaringly obvious. This can be run pretty smoothly alongside the fossil archetype and can leave plenty of wiggle room for experimentation. We could also consider Shadol's. Much like Invoked, Shadol can be incredibly flexible and there is no exception here. Shadol can offer a fantastic toolbox of options whilst keeping in with the fusion lines of play. And lastly to note, in this particular part we are taking a look at generic fusion support. There are a great number of cards that can fall under this category, but it would be a shame not to mention two of the most fantastic link options available, Cross Sheep and Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. Both of these cards hugely boost the consistency and power levels of the deck, offering easier access to powerful fusion spells, gaining extra resources, and acting as a catalyst for any of the decks that they can be used within. And again, with fossils, this is no real exception. And for the last section of today's video, we are going to take a quick look at some sample deck lists that you could try out for yourself. The intention here isn't to give you something tried and tested beyond all belief. The idea here is just to give you something that you could mess around with and use as a solid basis from which to build on if you want to try out the deck for yourself. Again, these lists aren't exhaustive, they don't represent all the things you could definitely do, and they most certainly will not be perfect, but hopefully they get you a little bit further along the line. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully you've learned a little bit of something about this anime favorite, this 
probably eventually going to be seen as one of those cool classic decks. Character was that Jim Crocodile fucking dude. Anyway, that one. But once again, I'm getting a little bit off track. That time is setting in. It's very, very hot at the moment. And I'm making all kinds of good excuses. That's why I'm talking absolute bollocks. But thank you very much either way for making it this far. If you have, this is absolutely incredible. Hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe. Potentially even the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of content in future. Every Monday we have market watches. We do deck profiles during the week. We do combo videos. We do more of these how to play kind of stuff. And I will consider any content that you would like to see if there's a certain demand for it. If there's anything you'd like to be covered as well, certainly go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed it, you should definitely let me know that too. Thank you very much in either case for checking in if you haven't already you should most definitely hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content i put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment before you go be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility thanks again for checking in and i'll see you in the next one